All right, folks, here we are, the final game of the lunch or the uh, morning session here before our lunch break. Round 20 of the 32 game World Scrabble Championship. We're going to feature Thatcha once again from Thailand against Australia's finest, David Eldar, on board one for this matchup. Uh, Thatcha, 15 and 4 right now, is just one game behind both Will Anderson and Wellington Jagari. Uh, and in sole possession of third place, Alex Seaholm of the States, a half game behind him after dropping a game last round. Uh, David Eldar had a bit of a rough stretch, but uh, has surged back this morning now in seventh place with 13 and a half wins, two and a half games behind Will Anderson and Wellington. Uh, excited for this one. Both players are looking for a big win here to stay atop the standings, but alas, only one player going to be able to do so. Some movement on the leaderboard this morning, Matt. Will and Wellington hanging on at the top, though. Uh, 16 and 3 for each of them. Seeing some old familiar faces start to climb. Dave Wiegand up to 12 and 7, 13th place. Austin Shin, 12 and 7, 16th place. There will be Austin plenty Shin. more movement to come. Shin is not a name we've talked about at all this tournament, but uh, that's quite surprising. He is a very strong player, and uh, now he's making the unsurprising run back up to the top. Dacha to play first, F-G-N-O-O-V-W on his rack. Uh, Val or G-O-W-F look like candidate options. Perhaps Ganoff, G-O-N-O-F as well. Uh, but likely G-O-W-F out of this rack is, is my guess. And that's what he is setting up to start. Elf, 22 points, VNO, perhaps not the best leave, but a terrible rack. You generally don't get the best leaves. So Galf, 22 points, and that's how this game begins. Eldar already drawing two of the four S's, and he will bingo a Geises, A-G-U-I-S-E-S, to play after this with G-O-W-F-S for 78 points. And I can't imagine David spends more than a few more seconds before dropping that down here. A little vertical opening from Thatcha. Didn't know they did that in Thailand. Yeah, vertical opening, a, a huge controversy in competitive Scrabble. Uh, not really, but also sort of really. Uh, absolutely no strategic merit as the board is symmetrical. Uh, it doesn't matter if you play vertically or horizontally. Most players prefer the horizontal opening, but... Dacha playing vertically here. A Geises comes down for Eldar, and he will pull ahead 78 to 22. D-J-I-N-N-O-V, the rack for Dacha now, and he will be able to score very well beneath that A. J-I-N-N or J-O-I-N, each score 42 points there. Perhaps J-U-N through the U in a Geises instead to hold D-I-N-O-V, but I don't think you do that. I think you grab 42 points here, if I had to guess. <laughs> that's what he's got set up matt a guise is one of those words that the handful of lexical purists who play nwl would say Ugh, that's the stuff we want to get out before we unite these dictionaries spencerian to adorn a guise and yet or, you, go ahead, Matt. Oh, if you draw that rack and you've played Collins and you're trying a TWL tournament, you really miss it because that's a nice way out of some ugly, ugly letters together. And it's why I think the the argument of, oh, we have to pick and choose to purge the dictionaries is going to be a tough one to merge the dictionaries, rather, is going to be a tough one to fly. These yeah. letter strings are just letter strings. And I think if you're a longtime Collins player, you'd look at the Americans and say, what? Who cares? Who's your arbiter going to be? Who's going to be this great dictionary wizard that is going to determine what stays and what goes? Well, I worship the great dictionary god in the sky. Um, I don't know about you, but he's the one who decides, right? Totally. Oh, wait, no, just some, some lexicographers at Merriam-Webster or with Chambers or Collins. Oh, okay, never mind then. Or inside our... Scrabble organizations picking and choosing. Or perhaps, yes. So uh, David with the nice R-O-N-Z here 
and would block up this board, address that J spot he was unable to hit, and score 26 points all at once. I like this play a lot. As Dacha picks up uh, A-A-D-N-U-V blank, so that blank going to help him here. He will have a couple different bingos, one using the G in Galf, and one that will either play through the O or to the S, depending on what he wants to designate the blank. Uh, Vanadus, V-A-N-A-D-O-U-S, or Vanguard. None of those can particularly high scoring. The highest option nope. down to the S, Vanadus for 65, Vanguard for 64 on this turn. But he will get a bingo down, assuming he spots one, and I can't imagine he doesn't here. A bingo is a bingo is a bingo. I think it's so cool at this tournament to see players from all across the world. Uh, David from Australia, Dacha from Thailand. It's so awesome bringing everybody all together playing Scrabble in English. And Stefan, uh, we were having a conversation in between games. You may be representing a country that has never been represented before at a tournament. Is that correct? I would like to. I don't know if it'll happen, but I was talking to Chris Leip, who's the chair of WESPA. Um, a few months ago, because I do have a Greek passport. My family from Greece. I lived in Greece for a couple of years after college. Um, and the only way that I would ever qualify outright to play in a World Scrabble Championship uh, would be to exploit my Greek heritage that way. Greece is not a member of WESPA, um, but there are ways to get, uh, uh, get a, an exemption or a qualifier by joining on some sort of one-time basis that Chris and I talked about. So maybe I'll do that someday, or maybe I'll get Chloe her Greek citizenship and she can play that way. But hunch is that she'll qualify on her own merits and would not need a side door entry to the world championship. But I would love to do that one day because my memories of reporting on the world's for word freak and being around international players at various tournaments um, are all so great. And it is wonderful to see all of these nationalities, all of these people from around the world sharing this, people that don't speak English, people that do speak English, people from countries that have a history um, with English and countries that don't, as we discussed with Thailand. Um, and for me personally, watching that first day of coverage of, on the stream and seeing my buddy Dan Sandu one of the two Romanian players that I featured in the section on, in Word Freak about the worlds really filled my heart with joy. I loved these guys. I'm still friends with them on Facebook. We occasionally exchange messages. Uh, the other is Katakaba, um, who is not at this tournament. But just seeing Dan play and then DMing him afterward to see how it's going was wonderful. And being around all of these players was a, a real joy for me when I was reporting the book. And I'd love to experience that firsthand one day. And I remember in your book, Dan uh, struggled at this tournament quite a bit. You know, he was learning English still, I believe, and, uh, you know, didn't have the best run. But Dan played an awesome game on stream, very solid. So he's improved immensely between Word Freak and now. And that's just so cool to see. Oh, these guys. And they were the best sports in all of my reporting. They understood their limitations, but they also shared their infectious joy with the game in English. I mean, they also played in Romanian and French. Um, you know, Romanian, I think, had something like 600,000 eligible words. Um, and they've both been very active in growing the game in their country, hosting tournaments, hosting regional and European tournaments. Um, these were two really good dudes that I am thrilled to see still active in the game. What a joy to, to see those names whenever I do in the uh, rosters for big tournaments like these. And I think it's particularly awesome, the players coming from countries where they don't really have an established English Scrabble scene, and they still come over and try to do their best. You know, it's one thing to get good at the game by sparring with other countrymen at tournaments uh, or in coffee shops or anywhere else. It's another thing to just kind of do it independently, like playing online, I guess, in a silo against computer programs. So that's, uh, that's awesome that we're able to see a uh, representation from different countries, especially without that established scene. I, I got the pleasure of meeting a German national champion, Ben Berger, but Ben winning the German national championship 
in German and then picked up enough English to compete compete at a world championship one year as well. So that was super cool as well. I just love the way Scrabble able to unite folks at a tournament like this from all around the world. Super cool stuff. I'm getting some cool reactions in the chat to my suggestion to play for Greece. Um, another European country, somebody saying I'm from Germany. That would be cool, Stefan. Someone else writing, I'm a Greek Francophone player reading your book while I watch the Westpac. So cool. Oh, David with a very tough turn here. We haven't really analyzed it. I apologize. But uh, yeah, he's got tough decisions. No playable bingos. H-E-E-D plays nicely between those two words here and right on cue. David's going to put it down here. Sets up his S nicely as well. I think the deliberation was between that and H-A-D to the right side of Vanadis as well as maybe danced from the D in Vanadis. But I like this play. When you got that S, you set it up, especially when there's only one more unseen, since he luck boxed into the first two S's on his first turn. And very elegant way to do it, too, through those disconnected tiles with a blank, opening a new lane for your S. Lovely. So Thatcha Dolium looks to be the clear play here. D-O-L-I-U-M. 30 points, a really good way to work out of a really bad rack. And I think you've got to make that play here as he sets it up on his rack. Thought you're likely going to pull the trigger on this quite soon as well. Just to follow up on my Greek thing, um, I, I have been in touch over the years with the head of the Greek Scrabble Association. They don't play in English. They, don't, they haven't held any English language tournaments in Greece. They do play in Greek. It's a much smaller scene, um, but there are active players and a bunch of clubs in the country. David with a great draw after that nice play of heed, and uh, he'll get to choose now what he wants to do with this rack. Several high-scoring bingos, Antisize through the I and Dolium. A-N-T-I-C-I-S-E plays for 78, but gives big counterplays. Sistvane, C-I-S-T-V-A-E-N, also 78 points through the V in Vanadis. There are no double-double opportunities available. If you want to bingo with the Z, I suppose you could play Zinkates from the Z here, but not a good defensive play. It's probably going to be Sistvane, if I had to guess. Maybe Antisize and possibly Canistel down to the L, but I think Sistvane does what David would like to do to the board and limits counter opportunities. David trying to keep us from seeing his tiles. I feel like a CSI forensics investigator when David plays. Could do a full analysis of his forearm hair or the microfibers in his hoodie. Yeah, we got a lot of hoodie cam yesterday yes, and a long hair cam today. So uh, thank you, David, for giving us high quality content. We appreciate it. I'd like to know more about Thatcha's rack. Is that Lego? It's beautiful. It's like a little couch, a little multicolored couch. It's gorgeous. Yeah. This is the second time now we've seen this on stream. I think he built it out of Lego entirely. That sure is what it looks like. That's, that's pretty sweet. We had the confirmation. Thatcha's rack is made of Lego. Love it. Seems like a huge business opportunity there. Absolutely. I'd, I'd buy a rack made out of Lego if you had glued it together. Uh, or, you know, what are some other creative options for racks out there? E E E E I L W. So the rack looks cool, but the tiles on the rack not so cool. In fact, ew is kind of what they make me think. Um, e E E W is valid. Plays above cyst vein. E A E E E N all overlaps. A we also playing underneath cyst vein, depending on your objective. Objective here. If you're Thatcha, he's also looking at W-E-I-S-E, -E, as he's got set up on his rack now, which would play through the S in Sistvane. All of these look like very nice options to me, and I'm not really sure which one I would pick or which one he's going to pick here. You giving back big counter plays, but allowing you to stack back on top and hit that triple if that's the spot that gets taken. Eldar's rack looks like a aquamarine or is that teal hoodie? Yes, yes. 
Nice, uh, nice weaving there, though. Nice stitching. Very nice stitching. E E E O R X with the G stuck at the end. I think we're just going to draw every E in the game over the next two turns. So E U indeed coming down. David sees three E's played, seeing three more E's on his rack. Wild stuff. Um, I'd make a joke right now, but I don't want to offend people, so I won't. Uh, David, though, high scoring opportunity above Dolium with that X, E X O, going to be able to come down. I think that's got to be the standard play here for him to make. Muck up the board, hold E E G R, score 39 all at the same time, does everything you're looking to do here. So I like that quite a bit for David. A little more Greekness in the chat. They do play a Greek national championship. Commentator, commenter uh, noting that uh, he visited the tournament. They visited the tournament. The Panhellenic Scrabble Union, some Spanish language, some French in Greece. No English, which is kind of surprising. But maybe good for me if I want to represent Greece someday. <laughs> no English yet, too. We got to do that growth mindset thing, Stefan. <laughs> true, true. Maybe I'll have to move back to Greece to set up an English language Scrabble club. Yeah, move back to Greece just to start English Scrabble play there. When I lived there, I was working as a journalist after college and was asked if I had stayed longer, I could have helped broadcast baseball in Greece. Oh. Which was getting started. EXO by David. That'll score a few, 32, 34, 37. Yeah, 39. Nine. Yeah, Bacha, not the best wreck, but the nice H-U-I to help him work out of it. Got to be careful, though. A-E-L-T looks like a nice leave, but if H-U-I stacks above cyst vein, the board becoming very shut down, those bingo-prone tiles may not help you. The S is going to be key to unlock that bottom part of the board with the Heed's hook, just one S unseen at this point in the game. Uh, HUI may play above assist vein, but also HUIS could play down to that S. Sacrifice four points, but keep the board a little bit more open if you're thought you're down 70 points. That may be a play you consider. HAUSE also may be an option through that S for 24 or shell out for points, T-H-A-E, playing above E-E-E-W for 33. But I-L-U and big stacking plays back. I don't think that's a play you make if you're Thatcha. H-U-I or H-U-I-S probably going to be uh, the move here. And speaking of uh, Greece, David's rack, Greek, plus an R-Y. So uh, perhaps he heard us and given a little shout out. A little Greekery. A Greekery, I like it. Just kidding, I don't. I'd immediately challenge that. <laughs> Geekery, though, we're seeing in chat is good. Geekery, I like that. Wow. It's, uh, this certainly a geekery here, this playing room for in Las Vegas. For those of you from around the world who maybe don't have a strong English Scrabble presence in your country, but maybe want to dabble in the game, try to practice it a little bit, there are numerous ways to play online. Of course, Scrabble Go, the main sponsor of this stream, is one way to play from your mobile phone or tablet. Uh, you've also got woogles.io, W-O-O-G-L-E-S.io, or the Internet Scrabble Club all of those ways for you to get some English Scrabble action in. And many of those places offer other lexica as well. Woggles offering a number of word games on there. Um, so lots of different options for you to get involved in the game. If you're watching this video after the fact and thinking, hey, this looks kind of cool, I wanna play. Uh, absolutely, I strongly recommend it. Find any one of those places and you can uh, play there. I definitely recommend you get into it. And if you look at these words and you're like, I don't know what a Vanadoos is. I don't know what a Geysers is. Don't worry. Me neither. You don't have to play. These are the cream of the crop best players in the entire world. And uh, Scrabble tournaments almost uniformly have different divisions. So you wouldn't be playing against David Elgar, who's won a world championship, or Thatcha, ranked top 20 in the world. Uh, more than likely, you'd be playing in the beginner division with other beginners. It's totally fine if you choose to remain a beginner forever and just want to travel around 
and play tournaments, or you can maybe slowly work your way up. I started in the beginner division. I played there for about four or five years before really working my way up. And uh, slowly but surely, I've gotten better and better and better at this game. You're not going to play David Eldar. He's not going to drop 500 points on you in your first game, I hope. Um, and I, I definitely recommend you try to get into the game, learn, play online. Okay, so HUI does come down for Thatcha, as we expected. And E E G R R K Y the rack. I did not know he took a back Y, and I did not know Greik. But both of those uh, coming down for David, Heedy and Greik showing off a great knowledge of the fives, locking up this board, and he is now ahead 280 on a board that is running quickly out of avenues to play on. Although, Dacha has pulled into A B L E, and A B E L E stacks wonderfully on top of H U I. So he'll still have sneaky options to throw down bingos in this game. He also has an incredibly high scoring option here, Falaj, F-A-L-A-J, or it's anagram, Aflaj, A-F-L-A-J, play down to the J in join. Uh, that's pretty sweet for him. Could also play from the OU in Dolium, out Fable, to open this board wide up and score 42. All of those great board opening plays that score a ton of points. So options yet for Thatcha. He is not out of this one. Abel, Bingos, Falage, Out Fable. Lots of ways for him to get back into this game. Out Fable looks like a lovely play with a big score there and spottable. If you got that OU hanging out there, you're going to look for it. But a flage and Falage also great plays. 47 points unlocking the top left quadrant of the board. For sure. Thatcha's, Thatcha's uh, tile shuffling technique is fascinating. It's almost like hitting the, the shuffle icon, the way he moves them around kind of randomly from each end at the same time, from the middle to the ends at the same time. David's uh, perhaps the least creative of them all, just put my tiles in alphabetical order and then cover them up with my sleeve. So completely different here. Thatcha just <laughs> randomly moving these letters around. David just staring at him. You know, eventually they're going to show up in an order that's playable, so why not? That alphabet there. <laughs> alphabet, yeah, very good. All right, so uh, sure. definitely missed opportunity here for Thatcha. FAB is a fine play. It's easy to get fixated on that AELT leave, but Falage, a Falage, Out Fable, all definitely better options on a blender from Thatcha this turn. I'm assuming no front hooks for Fen. I will have to check, but no, no front hooks for Fen. Getting a nice vertical look at David's hoodie. Ooh, shaking things up. Vertical instead of yeah. horizontal. Showing yeah. the stitching from another angle. We mentioned Heedy and Greik. Those are both Collins only. Heedy Spencer derived, Greik Old Norse derived and criticize the Collins lexicon if you must but you know the beauty of it is all of these words from all of the world and to me that is one of the glories of the English language the way we take in and assimilate words from everywhere um, and for all of these for all for all of these non-North American players um, that's just normal that's just assimilating our own cultures into the language, everything getting blended in there and accepted by lexicographers at Collins, the big dictionary publisher in the UK, and expanding the reach of English language. And as the dictionary business has sort of hit kind of an iceberg in the digital age in a lot of ways, a lot of North American dictionary companies going out of business, the emphasis for English language dictionary publishers in Europe uh, particularly the UK, has been expanding the reach of the language internationally and hunting for words and adding them um, from these foreign languages that are, that are derived from foreign languages and that are used in countries that are not uh, England or the United States. 
And I mean, English is a language that's always going to evolve. We saw Wellington drop PWN down. If you had told me that was a word 15 years ago, I'd be like, what on earth? And yet at the same time, high school English, I remember thinking I was never going to ever do this again, but I was forced to memorize the opening to the Canterbury Tales and recite cool. them in a test grade. And I've still got them. One that opera with the shortest sota, the drogt of March, hath perset da yeah. Uh, you know, it goes on and on, but English has evolved a lot in 600 years. We'll continue to evolve more and more and more. And, you know, somebody's got to decide how many of these older words do we want? How many of these newer words do we want? Pone looks like hot garbage, except when it doesn't. Um, you know, some of that older words in Canterbury Tales look like uh, absolute garbage as well. One zephyr at ache with his sweaty breath and spirit hot and every hot and head. Like, what? Is that even the same language? Am I speaking Scottish right now? But, uh, you know. How many of those words do we let in? Now you're just flexing now, Matt. Come on. I'm trying to make Paula Holmes proud, my old, old English teacher. <laughs> Someone points out in chat that there's literally just one dictionary publisher left in the United States. And to some degree, that's absolutely true. Merriam-Webster, um, in terms of someone publishing books still, and they barely publish books. They don't publish updated versions of their standard collegiate dictionary. Uh, they haven't published a new printing of their unabridged dictionary in like 20 years. Um, everyone else has fallen by the wayside. Um, where there are updates of standard American dictionaries, they are done by skeletal freelancers um, with tiny updates every five or 10 years that are basically a way to generate a press release and print a new edition of you know, a few thousand hard copies and hope someone will buy them. Um, Dictionary.com does have a robust defining staff, um, but they are, of course, online only. Um, different approach, uh, but same sort of standards in terms of adding words to the lexicon. And in terms of, I wrote a piece about this for Slate last fall when the new official Scrabble Players Dictionary was published by Merriam-Webster, does raise a question for North American Scrabble. Where are you going to find new words? Um, only from Merriam, we have a history of taking words from lots of sources, um, new sources, scouring dictionaries, running out of dictionaries where you can do that, pretty much have run out of them. Um, so I know that's an internal conversation with NASPA in terms of what to do going forward, and it feels like it's an issue to me. Um, I would go read my piece from, from on Slate about that, and I think that we do face a little bit of a dilemma here in the United States as, as dictionary uh, publishers fall by the wayside, what do you do to keep the pool of words robust and ever expanding? Yeah, the big questions in Scrabble, I don't get paid nearly enough money to answer them. And frankly, I'm just here to try to make the best tactical play with the, the combinations of letters I'm allowed to use. And I think many top players appro approach the game in the same way. Um, smart people, lexicographers can solve those questions. Volunteers who scour the dictionaries not me. I, I'm just trying to make words. <laughs> uh, tell us what the words are and we will play them, correct? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll accept whatever. You know, honestly, it's all, it's all Greek to me. So Yerba dropping down immediately for David, 55 points. And this one's getting very out of hand. I think that miss of the afflage or filage plays as well as out fable just absolutely going to snowball on Thatcha here. Tough, tough. A uh, series of events for him, especially with him not drawing the second blank. He will bingo. And David, though. David has drawn the second blank. Yeah, a, a bingo with the second blank draw may be a chance for him into this game. He will get tamponed here, but he will not be able to find that second blank as it is on David's rack and uh, just right next to fiber number six hundred and eighty-four. Yeah, yeah. So tamponed. 78 points, D-I-O-O-R-T, blank, wonderful draw for David into O-I. I wish uh, O-I went that well for me. We saw O-I go terribly for Josh Castellano last game over and over and over, but it works very well for David. He will not bingo this turn, and he's got to be a little bit concerned about that K-Y spot. K-Y taking both a back E and a back U. We'll get the unseen pool on display from David's perspective, he knows seven random tiles being drawn from Dacha out of this pool, um, but eight in the bag. He's got to make sure he doesn't get bingoed on once again and uh, make sure a lot of points aren't scored either. Uh, 
trying to get that unseen pool up. Uh, production team's got to be working on it behind the scenes. Here we go. So eight tiles in the bag, 15 unseen for Eldar. He'll figure out how to approach this game. He's only up 21 all of the sudden. That Q could be a concern for him. That S to hook on Yerba, a concern. The E that he doesn't have for KYE, a concern. All of a sudden, that bingo from Thatcha. Uh, we might have a, a little game here. Yeah, maybe we spoke too soon here, Matt. Yeah, and Thatcha picking up the Q. He'll play QADI through the D and Tampon next turn. Okay, okay. Lexa, I'll stop reading Canterbury Tales for fun and start analyzing Scrabble once again, I suppose. Dang, I hate when I have to do my job. A little too much focus on Thatcha's Lego rack and David's sweater. Maybe we should pay attention to the words being played. Oh, David wants us to look at this sweater all day. Trying to win an endorsement, perhaps? If I got an endorsement from this tournament, it would absolutely be Wawa. I'm from Texas. We don't have Wawa there, the gas station chain on the East Coast. Uh, but Wawa has been instrumental in keeping me going. I bought their coffee several times, their late night sandwiches, as I don't get to finish broadcasting till close to midnight sometimes on the East Coast. So thank you, Wawa, for helping me keep going. Sponsor me, please, or at least give me a cup of coffee for this. This turns so hard for David. What do you hard. do? What do you do? Chad, help me out. This is way too hard. Do you play Oxid and try to bingo? Do you uh, try to score a lot of points? Uh, are you trying to block? If you are, what are you trying to block? Uh, O-D-O-R looks to be a good play alongside Tampon, but of course I'm saying that because I know the Q is on Thatch's rack here. Uh, I don't know. Oh, man. Tough. Now the question is, what are David's priorities here? What are his biggest considerations? What are his biggest worries? The Q has to be one of them. And yet, with that blank on your rack... I don't know. What what could you do? That that basically gets to serve as the final U. There are no U's left unseen. There's one in a guise's Q-U-A or a word ending in Q-U-E could play there. You don't want to draw the Q. You want to be able to cash it if you do draw it, but you don't want to let your opponent hit you with it for a big score as well. Are you addressing the S hook on Yerba? Are you addressing the line underneath the Yerba? Are you addressing the Cotty opportunity? Is there something from the Z maybe that addresses the triple word lane there? Zuid maybe? Zuid is a thing you could do. Um, it would close and open opportunities in that line. Big underlaps could mm -hmm. uh, could hit you back, but you wouldn't get bingoed on. Uh, drawing seven random tiles, you do see the letters in retains or retinals. Um, cisternal or whatever in that rack. Those are all great bingo tiles, but only five vowels, 10 consonants. You know, maybe he didn't draw enough bat vowels to bingo. This is really hard for David. I thought this game was over. That's why I was talking about random stuff, but that play a tampon, all of a sudden things are interesting yet again. And Valletta opening the board up in the upper left quadrant. Smart move by Thatcha. What opportunities could really hurt you with Yerbas if the S is unseen? You know, I'm not seeing anything better than like Cist or Cast, C-I-S-T or something in Yerbas, which is 40 points, you know, but I can probably survive that. It's my turn. I'm already up 21. What plays can hit you underneath Yerba? Uh, you know, a bingo ending in an E or something would be absolutely killer. What else do I have to worry about? A Q draw I have to worry about. So make sure I've got what I need to score points if I draw it. Looks like he has set up OID on his rack, looking at Lloyd LOID from the L in Valletta. That is a reasonable option for him. Scores a good amount of points. Uh, you also want to be thinking about tempo in this situation. Uh, you'd like to go out before your opponent and maybe a little bit premature to be thinking there, but um, eight tiles in the bag. If I play three here, I leave five. That makes it somewhat likely I can play out before you, given I've got a lot of flexibility on my rack and you might have a cue. I don't know. You could also look to open this board. Think my rack is so good. I might just 
bingo, but I think that's too greedy. I don't, I don't think you can do that here. This is tricky. I'm excited to see what David does because he's probably one of the best players in the world to approach a situation like this, given his extensive background with other games as well. David, a poker player for many, many years, very successful as a teenager playing online and then live poker. And I always enjoy watching players who come from other gaming backgrounds because they bring a different line of thought to the game. A lot of players have mastered Scrabble and they play the game of Scrabble very well. They know what the computer tells them to do and they do it. But players who come from other backgrounds, poker like David and Rafi Stern or Magic the Gathering like Ori Swift, uh, really cool because they have some really clever, innovative ways to approach the game. And especially in situations like this, I think that's where they shine. Eldar, of course, was playing Scrabble from a young age. He was the world champion in 2006, the youth champion. So poker, I think, came later for David, um, and he has mastered both of those games. A lot of chess players, of course, too, Matt. Absolutely, yeah. Chess players uh, perhaps go crazy by the luck component in this game. You know, chess, a, a zero luck game, and Scrabble, absolutely a luck-based game. But that's why I love this game, because you have to harness the odds, the probability, and the chance in your favor, whereas chess, you just have to be better. I remember um, Joel Sherman, the former World and North American champion, once telling me that he was a recovering chess player many, many <laughs> years ago. A recovering chess player. I like that. Much preferred Scrabble. All right. So it looks like Loin, Lloyd, sorry. Lloyd, uh, drawing the E is something Eldar would love to do. And yet the E we know is on Thatcha's rack. He'll be able to hold on to it for KYE and cash this Q here. If I'm Thatcha, I'm playing the Q right away. And that and, basically ties this game up. Yeah. Yeah, and I get to hold on to the C and some good flexible tiles to play KYE next turn. I'm also afraid of the S. S draw big for Eldar, and here it is, right on cue. Man, am I good at my job over and over and over. I've been calling these draws right as they come out. Did you uh, also call David tripling his R? I did not call that, no. But with the unseen pool, look at what Thatch is looking at. Three R's, three T's. Uh, something oh, and that, that tripled R actually is a bingo, so... these what does ky take showing off my lack of collins knowledge does it take does us? E and you so yes. he does have rorters and terrors but no spot for either of those and kadi puts thatcha down by just one point leaving two in the bag and he'll draw very well we saw this word on stream yesterday penicil P-E-N-I-C-I-L. And once again, on Thatcha's rack, it doesn't fit on this board, but he is going to have good dynamic options for next turn. This game got very interesting very quickly. Now, what are your considerations if you're David? Uh, Score down like with Yerba, burn the S now, try to kill the KYE spot. I think priority one is I need to go out before my opponent. I need to make the last play in this game, and i got to do what I can to make sure that's going to happen. I know I'm going to draw two tiles, so that means I'm looking to play off as many tiles as I can this turn. But I've also got to score points. So uh, lots to think about here. A WHO RTS from the WHO is a sneaky way to score 28 but that leave ORR blank, I don't know that David's going to be able to go out in two and Thatcha almost certain too with uh, the flexibility in that pool. If I'm David too, if the E is still in the bag, I think this game is mine. So I have to assume, play pessimistically, the E is on Thatcha's rack. Otherwise, I've got this game already. Um, and then figure out how I can address spots, how I can try to go out, how I can outrun plays with the KY spot. Uh, lots to think about, and he's only got about two and a half minutes left to do that. Also, bingo's unseen to David. Uh, entitle, perhaps, an option, I-N-T-I-T-L-E. I don't know that you have to block the bingo. Kadi is a play Thatcha forced to make with almost any rack out of that pool. 
Um, so you can't make a ton in terms of inference. He's bingoed. He plays Kadi. So mostly random tiles in that bag uh, for Thatcha. David going to score Rost, R-O-S-T, holding those two R's, but he knows he can't draw any more. Though, again, if you assume that E is on Thatcha's rack, you're playing uh, you're playing the paranoid game here, likely going to lose after that play. Thatcha going to go out and two, hit the KYE spot. Uh, I think David feels the same thing, but low on time, he may not be able to find a better option here. I may be looking to play T-O-R-R or T-O-R-R-S and T-E-E. -E. It's only 15 to play tours or 11 to play tour, but I need to play as many tiles as I can and threaten an outplay next turn. Is David thinking that if Thatcha Bingo is on toast anyway, so the out in two is the preferable way to outrun him? The out in two, I think, one of the only ways to outrun, yeah. But Rost maybe scores enough to do it. He's going to put that down, R-O-S-T. He's going to reach into the bag, hoping to find that E. He's not going to find it. He'll find two Ts, and that's all. He is not going out next turn, and that is tough. Dacha now down by 27 points, knowing David in a time crunch and doesn't have great tiles on his rack, knowing he's got the option here. Folks, we're going to see a tie. Uh, if Thatcha knows the four tile P-I-C-I-N-E, that plays with K-Y-E, 40 points there. And uh, if this end game played optimally, David would have to spot Hortz, W-H-O-R-T-S, next turn. Uh, but that would tie the game. David has already tied one game this tournament. And I noted on stream that was a loss for him, essentially, because he has 1,600 points of spread or so. Clearly going to win the spread tiebreaker, so a tie, effectively a loss. A second tie would be awesome for David right now. It would be essentially a win. But a lot of stuff has to happen. Dacha has to know, spot, and play, P-I-C-I-N-E, which is a strange six. It does not take an S. Those words, always tough to know. And then David would have to go back and spot W-H-O-R-T-S, which is also very hard to find with one blank on the board and another on your rack. This is wild. Oh my goodness. I had written this game off and all of a sudden I have no idea. Thatcha could win if David misses Hortz. David could win if Thatcha misses Piscine. I don't know what's going to happen. Tense. He does not have that six set up on his rack. I think that's a play. I mean, if you see it, you're you're likely going to pull the trigger on it quickly. It looks so good, but you want to be very, very certain. He's also got the five C L I P E that set up on his rack right now, and uh, oh my goodness, David has an out. Yeah, Trouter plays through the O U, so Trouter actually goes out and would win the game after Clipe. Will Thatcha spot the out? Wow. Will he figure out a way to outrun the out? Clipe isn't going to do it. Trouter, a trout fisherman? Only Collins? David's going to know that. So P-I-C-I-N-E would beat Trout by three points. Or sorry, would beat Trouter by three points. Clipe would lose to it by two points. Wow. Wow. Chat pointing out Chris Leip is set up on Thatcher's rack. Very good. Chris Leip. Or Leip Incorporated, which is uh, what I think he's going to try to rename WESPA as the chair. <laughs> okay, maybe not. The acronym works pretty nicely, too. David has Hortz set up on his rack. Chat also pointed out it looks like he may have seen it last turn. Um, and I'm surely he's going to spot Trouter as well. So he sees two good plays over there. Dacha maybe going to look at ways to block those, but if you block those, I think your big KYE plays also get blocked, and then this game just gets crazy. Cesar in chat saying, if Thatcha plays Piscine, I'm renaming Aerolith to Thatcha Lith. <laughs> 
Oh man, those weird sixes that don't take an S. Are there any other inflections or forms of Piscean? I don't know. Does Hortz win anyway? Uh, so if Clipe comes down, let me let me run this through the engine. Yes. Clipe Hortz comes down for 24 and then gotcha to go out with IN for 15 beneath Kadi. No, Hortz is not going to beat Clipe. Uh, only Trouter beats Clipe. Uh, we have uh, 400 people in chat, and we have me and Stefan on the mic, and we have Quackle open. And I don't know if we're going to figure out this pre in game or this in game situation uh, in enough time. <laughs> so, Thatcha, one brain all by himself, has a lot to think about here as he's, well. He's got four and a half minutes to do it. Thatcha plays P I and O U P. What happens here? No, David just blocks with R blank and KY blank and wins the game. Or GRR would win the game. T-E-E-R through the E-E. -E. Anything that blocks uh, KYE would win for David in that situation. And Piscine does not take an S, so not an obvious word to necessarily know. of the woodpecker family. If Thatcha, even if you're only like 10% sure uh, Piscine is a word, if you feel like every other option going to lose the game 100%, you've got to pull the trigger on that word. It's just spread at that point. But, you know, that's a word you either know it or you don't. Like you've studied it or you haven't. It's not something you can guess. Nope. Clive coming down. If David spots Trouter, the game is his. Double checking his math. Here it comes. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, no. So David's blown it. <clears throat> Thought you to go out now with IN beneath Cotty, and he'll win the game. Wow. Crowder, tough to spot. RRTT blank. You're not even looking to go out, but uh, David low on time uh, whiffs it completely. And thought you to hang on and win. Wow. I Quackle's, Quackle's confirming the score, right? Yeah, Quackle confirms. Uh, David now 440 to 426. IN goes out for 15, grabs four more points off of Eldar's rack. Uh, thought you to win by five, assuming we have all the challenges worked out correctly. Uh, there were no challenges this game, right? What an incredible game. What an incredible game. Wow. Thatcha sneaking this one out. Even though David draws that S at, or the blank at the end of the game and the S at the end of the game, the E and the Q, the ways for Thatcha to unlock points. Let's cut to the overhead mic and hear this one. <laughs> Player's going to recount in this game. Uh, we may not get a postmortem for a minute. As the players do this, for those less familiar with Scrabble, recounts are allowed. Players are required to keep and report their own scores during a game. And if a player makes a mistake and it's not noticed or caught, it just stays on your score sheet the whole game. So generally, games within about five points are recounted. Uh, both players are going to do so here to make sure they can't spot extra points for David. Uh, but if our scoring is correct, there were no challenges this game, 445 to 440 to be the final. What a crazy end game. You know, we expect so much from the very best players and they often just make the same boneheaded mistakes that 
I would make. And I mean, low on time, Trotter, very tough to spot. I had a lot play. of time on Thatcher's clock, though, while he was considering the Clipe play. So David did have time to work it out, Matt. He did. He did. Yeah, Thatcher's spending, I believe, about seven minutes on the Clipe turn. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You're going to try this one? I don't know. I'm afraid you're going to try. Oh. It's good, huh? Yeah. What the hell? Oh, my God. I don't know what to do. I, I think about blocking, but, but you're going to block me and you have a blank. Wow, how did I miss that? What the fuck? <laughs> I am recounting because I lose my tool. I'm not Jesus recounting Christ. one. Jesus Christ. Okay, whatever. Let's be done with this. <laughs> okay, not my day. I'm not even sure it's good and I'm going to challenge that. What the hell is wrong with me? Alright, whatever. So I think torture may be an again. <laughs> yeah, I didn't properly look for it or something. Jesus Christ. Alright, whatever. Yeah, that's enough Scrabble for today. I'm no, sure. that's not enough Scrabble. Four more games. What? Yeah, I didn't. I don't know. My head. When you play one, or maybe. Sorry. When you play one, I think. I think. I was... think you, you already calculate everything. Yeah, I already. Yeah, no, no, no. I just my brain exploded. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. Can do it for you. <laughs> oh, poor David. Yeah. It's me. All right, so Thatcha with the mega flex there, show you your winning move as soon as you uh, finish the recount. Uh, David realizing right away, oh no, he just didn't see it, and uh, that's got to be just the worst feeling in Scrabble. Uh, you know, getting your your winning play pointed out immediately and realizing you've blown a game on the world stage on stream in front of everybody. That's a tough break for Eldar. That's a tough spot, tough situation. And as David says, that's enough Scrabble for me today. That's enough Scrabble for me right now. Uh, we are going to cut away to lunch break after that game. We have four more games this afternoon. They will begin in about 90 minutes, 5.30 Eastern time, 2.30 Pacific time. I do want to give a big, big thank you to Stefan Fatsis fighting through COVID and joining me on stream electronically today. Stefan, thanks so much for your time. Matt, that was a huge, huge thrill and a lot of fun to do it with you. You're a super pro at this. And let's do some more streaming together in the future. That was great. Yeah, absolutely. I'll take you up on that 100%. Again, Stefan Fatsis joining me this morning. I will have James Curley on this afternoon. So if you like British accents, you got to tune back in for that one. We are going to cut it there. A great win from Thatcha to uh, help him stay in third place in this tournament. Five points over the Aussie David Elgar. We're going to cut away. We will see y'all back here in 90 minutes. Until then, take care and adios.